to question four, we're looking at, again, theories of justice here. So again, it's worth going through each of these statements um, to have a look at them. I actually think that this one is missing a heading. I think they want to know which one of these is false, um, but I'm not sure that that is in the document that I have here. I'm not sure about what your copy says, but looking at answer D, I'm thinking it's wanting us to identify which one is false. Okay. Nozick's theory of justice focuses on the principle of liberty. Yep, that, that's true. He was a libertarian. John Rawls' theories of justice uses a thought experiment to determine the principles of distributive justice. Yes, that's true, because Rawls particularly thought that it was very difficult for an individual to separate their own biases from, their, from where they're situated in life. And the only way to do that was, again, to have this thought experiment where we were behind what he called the veil of ignorance, where we um, don't know where we'll end up in society. So that's true. According to utilitarian theory of justice, a system of just if happiness is maximised. Yes, that's true. D, justice can be considered an individual character-related virtue or excellence. You know, that's a tricky one, um, but that is actually true. Um, if we, Particularly if we went to Aristotle, Aristotle um, decided that justice or, or defined justice and greed is on a continuum. It's probably the, uh, one of the few dimensions that doesn't have a negative vice uh, with a golden mean. He just has the one, vi the one virtue of justice and the vice of greed at the other end. So that's actually true, according to Aristotle. That's a tricky one, but that's true. So that means E, none of the above statements are false. So presuming that this question is identify the correct response here, none of those above statements are actually false. Question five, laws meet the ideal of certainty. Okay, so certainty. So we know that law has attributes uh, when it's an ideal law, and one of those is certainty. A, laws are clear rather than vague or ambivalent so that people are able to make agreements confidently aware of the relevant legal rules. Um, yeah, that would be certainty, right? When, 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 you, when you're certain what the law is, when it's not vague or ambivalent. Okay, so that, I think A is a good answer. Let's keep going though to be sure. Laws are able to respond to changes in technology, community values, and political context. Actually, that's a different ideal of law, isn't it? That, that would be flexibility. So it's not certainty, that's flexibility. Laws are seen by most members of the community to be reasonable and fair. Oh, no, that's fairness, right? It's just as fairness. Laws are reported in law reports and statutes so people are able to find out what the relevant law is. Okay, now that's accessibility, not certainty. So A is our answer here, certainty. Okay, question six. Queensland Parliament has decided to sell a 500 metre stretch of beach on Fraser Island to a property developer for the construction of a hotel and a casino. To be able to sell the land, the Queensland Parliament passed the Fraser Island Land Use Act. Section 4 of the Act states, the Queensland Parliament can subdivide and sell any part of any state land, including beaches and rivers. In 1954, the Commonwealth passed the Australian Waterways and Beaches Act, Section 122 of the Act states, the Commonwealth Crown owns all beaches and riverbanks in Australia. Section 123 states, no riverbanks or beaches in Australia can be privately owned, subject to this Act. The Commonwealth has concurrent power to legislate in the areas of beaches, in the areas of rivers and beaches. Which of the following is correct? Okay. So what do we have? We have a classic um, clash of Queensland and Commonwealth legislation. What do we know prevails? Well, generally, it depends upon what the power, what kind of power it is. Okay, if it's um, an exclusive power for the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth will prevail. If it's a concurrent power that they both have then section 109 of the constitution says the Commonwealth will prevail. If it's a residual power, and by that we mean the Commonwealth doesn't have power, right, it's the powers that were left with the states when they formed the federation, then the Queensland law will prevail. Okay, so let's have a look at these answers. 
The Queensland legislation is invalid because according to 109 of the Constitution, if there is inconsistency between state and Commonwealth, the Commonwealth legislation prevails. Okay, that sounds true, but let's see if there's a better answer. The Queensland legislation is valid because according to 109, if there's an inconsistency between the state and Commonwealth, the state prevails. That's not true because we know section 109 doesn't say that, okay, uh, particularly where there's a concurrent, where there's a uh, concurrent power. The Queensland legislation is invalid because according to 109, if there's an inconsistency between state and Commonwealth, the legislation that runs contrary to the spirit of the Constitution is, oh, I've never heard about anything contrary to the spirit of the Constitution. It's actually all about residual or concurrent powers. The Queensland legislation is valid. Well, we know that that's not true um, because according to section 109, if there's an inconsistency between state and the latter legislation prevails over earlier legislation. No, that's, that's not at all true. So our best answer is A, right? The Queensland legislation is invalid because according to section 109 of the constitution, if there's an inconsistency between state and Commonwealth legislation, the Commonwealth legislation prevails over state legislation. But remember that that's only going to work for, for concurrent and exclusive powers. If it's a residual power, then the state legislation is the one that is valid. So we'll have a bit of a pause and then on to the next few questions.